Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video we're going to be rewinding it back to December 2019. I hope you'll stick around not only to see the cards that I'm going to make but to see how I'm going to switch it up just a little bit. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. The past few months, I've been stopping by with the Sheetload Rewind. And what I do is go back to an older edition of Sheetload. Sometimes I switch it up a little bit. Sometimes I just make a new set using the exact instructions. Well, today I will be switching it up just a little bit because you'll see here in a minute with the papers I found, it kind of gives me a shortcut on the sketch. If you're inspired to create using this sheet load of cards and you haven't yet downloaded it, at the end of this video I'll tell you how you can do that. Also, if you would like to see more videos using the December 2019 sheet load of cards, I will have this playlist both in the description box below and at the end of the video as an end card. And you can see lots more inspiration using this same layout. Now if you're inspired to play along, up on screen now are some hashtags you can use here on YouTube and over on Instagram, and I will also have them listed in the description box below. Normally I would have the hashtags at the top of the printable, but this is one of the additions that I created before I started adding that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main products that I'll be using, and then we'll get started. I will of course be using the December 2019 printable which is free to subscribers and once again I'll tell you at the end of this video how to download it. Before we move on to the products, one of the pieces that we were originally to cut was a tag shape. Well you'll see here how I have a little shortcut. Also, this originally made 12 cards and we're going to switch it up just a little bit. I think we're probably going to get 15. We do need some fishtail ends in a couple pieces, so I got out my Stampin' Up! Triple Banner Punch. And now for the papers. I was at my local scrapbook store, which is Busy Scrappin' here in Omaha, and I had bought some other papers for the January sheet load, and on the way out, I spied this set. And knowing that I had to do a rewind this month that had a tag in the sketch, I'm like, I have got to get it. Because look at these perfect tags that are all ready to go with sentiments. Now, even if you're like, how would I use a guest check tag on a card? No problems. If you turn it over, there are also lots of blank tags that you could add a different sentiment to. These papers are from Simple Stories Hearth and Home, and if I can find them online still, I will have it linked in that description box below. But I just thought a lot of these, you know, like, hello friend, um, you're the salt to my pepper, thank you, from our home to yours, would go well on a card, but then I knew I also had those blank ones on the back. The original sheet load called for three sheets of 12 by 12 and you would actually cut the tags from one of these. So like I said, we are going to switch it up a little bit and I went ahead and chose three papers from the line to mix and match. I'm not sure later how they'll all end up together, but I guess we'll wait and see and we'll find out. <laughs> One thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to make some slight adjustments to the sizes. Because the tags on that other piece of paper are larger, I do want my background larger as well as my little flags here. So what I'm going to do is my A's, I'm going to cut to three and three quarters by five. I will not need to cut any of these, but I do still need the fishtail pieces. So instead of three and a half by one, I'm going to cut each of these to four by one, just so they're a little bit wider and go behind that tag better. And you'll find out what I mean here in just a little bit. 
I will let you know about any other products or tools I add along the way, but as always, if I leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to be cutting down this sheet of tags and I just cut each row and then once the three rows are cut, I turn and I cut each tag individually. I also use my scissors to cut the top corners off of each tag as well as any stray bits that might have been hanging out from when I cut each one down. Also, I brought in my hole punch and I punched each of the holes that were shown on the tag so you can see through that. I continued the same process until I had all of the tags cut. Then it was time to cut my pattern papers and like I mentioned earlier, I will be altering this slightly and because I want a two inch strip at the bottom for my decorative fishtails, I'm going to start by cutting my rows from the top. So I cut two strips that are five inches tall and for right now I'm just going to leave that bottom section as is and bring in my five inch tall sections and cut these to three and three quarters inches wide. Now because of the way it's all going to work out with my cutting, I need to end up with five of these pieces. I brought in that last strip and I cut it into two pieces that were one inch tall. Now the first cut was kind of easy to make, I could hold it with my fingers, but to make the next one there wouldn't be room. So I brought in a piece of scotch removable tape and just temporarily tacked that by the one inch mark and sliced it. Then I'm going to take each of these and cut them into four inch wide sections, again cutting until I have five. This is what it looks like for one piece of paper. I have these 10 pieces and I cut the other two off camera in the exact same way. My plaid paper does have a B side that I do use later, but you'll see the back sides of the other twos were cut apart, so I won't be able to use those on the final cards. This would be the time normally when I would cut down my other piece of cardstock into the little fish tails, but because I will not be using my sentiment on there, it will be on the tag, I don't need to cut them, but this would be a great opportunity to use scraps. Off camera, I cut eight pieces of craft cardstock in half, and then I brought in a new to me tool, Merry Christmas from my family, a mini score pal. And my favorite part about this is the little ejection button for the scoring tool. It goes boop, and then it just flies out of there. There's no more having to dig your fingernail underneath that scoring tool. Anyway, the little things make me smile. I did though go ahead and use this for each of my card bases. I went down about three times for each score line and then I folded it and I reinforced that score with my bone folder once I had all of them done. My next step was to put the fishtail end in each of my little pieces. So I am going to use this punch. It is totally optional. You could always cut these or use a square to punch it. Now you'll see it does take quite a bit off the end. So later I will most likely cut this in half because my tag would cover up a majority of it. But if I cut it in half it would allow it to extend further. Now while I continue to punch the fishtail ends in these, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today's question is inspired by my craft card bases. I would like to know, do you stick with standard color card bases or use a rainbow of colors depending on the card? I would love to know your answer in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered it and would like me to see it. For myself, since a lot of my cards are mass produced like this sheet load, I do stick with some standard color card bases. I keep a lot of white cardstock on hand, craft cardstock, I have off-white and ivory that I probably use the most. Now if I'm doing just a card or two just singles, I will switch it up and get out some of my Gina K cardstock. 
but I do like to keep it on the cheaper side and I can get my white cardstock at Hobby Lobby for half off. I can't wait to see your answers. After I punched all of those fishtails, I have these fun little pieces that I will show you later how I incorporate into the cards. Alrighty, so now I want to slow things down and kind of talk with you about how I'm going to put together my card kits or what goes on each card. I did go ahead and flip over a couple of the plaid ones because what I like to usually try to do is get one pattern paper that is kind of busier with more colors, so that would be these two, and then match it up with another paper or two with a smaller pattern or just a single color pattern, and that would be these. Now today though, I also need to keep in mind the colors on my tags. So for instance, this one is pretty colorful. So my flag in my background can probably be kind of muted. So what I'm gonna do is pick, let's see, this for the background, because it does have the green on the whole reinforcer. And then for my strip behind it, I'm gonna choose kind of another muted one. And like I mentioned in the voiceover, hopefully I remembered, I will probably end up later cutting these apart so that I can make it look wider on the card because these tags are wider than on the original. Not as much of the little fishtail piece shows out from behind. For my next one, I wanna skip down here to this one. And this is very simple color. There's not much to it. So I want my background to be one of the more colorful ones. And I think I'm going to go with this little kitchen shelf scene because I have pops of that same yellow on the shelf which is where the whole what the whole reinforcer is and then for my strip that goes across it won't be another busy pattern it will be one of the more muted ones and i think for this i'm going to go with the green leaves and you can always put it up there and if you're like oh no i don't like that you could switch it out at this point so you know if you wanted to change it to that you could do that totally up to you but I'm gonna keep putting these together until I have all my card kits made and then we'll see how many card kits I have to know approximately how many cards we're gonna get out of this whole idea today. Now, one other thing I will do is kind of, when I set these card kits off to the side, I'll offset them so one will go that way and one will go that way. Later, it's just easier to grab each individual one. Now that all of the main pieces are cut, I can start to put my cards together. The large piece of pattern paper just gets centered on the front of each card, and then I'm going to take the fishtail banners, snip those in half, I add adhesive to the right side, and I'm going to put this about, oh, an inch and a quarter from the bottom, aligned with the right side of the card. Then I take the second piece of the fishtail, add adhesive to the back and do my best to move it about a quarter of an inch away from the right side. That way, when you put the tag on later, it will cover that up. Now for now, I am just gonna set these to the side with the tag because I do want to pop that up on the card. So I continue to place the fishtails until those are all ready. I ended up with three different categories of cards. On the top, they already have sentiments, so I set those to the side. Down on the bottom, I need to add a sentiment to the tag, and then I have this one that I will end up stamping the inside. For my stamp set today, I am using Pretty Pink Posh Everyday Greetings. I love the handwritten look of these. I end up using the thank you and the hi. And for my inks, I chose from Gina K Designs, Fresh Asparagus, and Tomato Soup. I thought these went well with the colors in the pattern papers. I'm gonna start by inking up my thank you stamp with the tomato soup, and I stamp that kind of centered top to bottom on the open area of the tag. 
Now I just continue stamping sentiments until I have all the tags that need it with one. You'll see here that sometimes I rotate that sentiment a little bit to fit on the tag. And then between each one, when I want to switch it up, I clean off my stamp and then I get out my new stamp and I switch inks. Here's a look at all of the finished stamp tags and also a look at the inside of the other card which I use the You Are Amazing stamp from that same set. To pop these tags up off the card front, off camera I cut some kids fun foam into pieces that were one and a half inch wide by three inches tall. Then I added adhesive to one side, placed it on the back of the tag, added adhesive to the second, and placed that on the card. I let these sit under some stamp blocks to dry for about five minutes before I moved on. Now I wanted to decorate these a little bit more, so I brought in a die of the month that I had from Spellbinders. I believe it's July 2017, and I cut some of these off camera using those larger scraps that I showed you earlier. I'm going to place one on each of the card fronts. I try to pick one that isn't already a pattern paper on the card, add a little adhesive to the back, both in dots and thin lines, and then place that so it's peeking out from behind the tag. Then, to decorate the inside a little bit, I brought in those scraps from punching my fishtails and I adhered that to the inside of the card, just bringing some of that pattern from the front to the inside. I continued adding the leafy bits and the inner decoration to each of the cards and I let these dry for about five minutes. And here is a look at all of the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these 15 cards a day with the December 2019 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. And now let me tell you how you can download the printable. As always, sheet load of cards printables are free to my subscribers. Subscribing to my channel doesn't cost you anything and it's super easy. Just click on that button below this video. We do just go on the honor system here. I don't make you email me proof, sign up for a mailing list, or anything like that. So please, if you're going to click on the link, make sure you already are subscribed. In the description box below, right under the product list, I have a link to the December 2019 sheet load of cards. Now below it, it will say password watch video, but your password is just watching all the way to this point in the video to find out how to download it. You can click on that link and either view it on screen and create using that, or you can download it to your device and print it. That is completely up to you. All I ask is that you do not distribute the sheet load of cards yourself. If somebody would like it, please send them to my channel. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.